Everybody, come on. Everybody, just clap your hands. Good morning, good morning, good morning, hallelujah. It is a great day in the Lord Jesus today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are gathered in this place today to worship the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, for he is truly, truly, truly worthy to be praised. Psalm 95 verses uh, one through seven says, oh, come let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains is also his. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are his people, of the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord, our creator and our shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. That is why we come together on this Sunday morning. We come together collectively to worship our creator, to worship our shepherd, to worship our great king and our great God. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together today and give the hand clap of praise unto the Lord, for he is truly worthy, 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 worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. He has made all things by his hand. And his wisdom is unsearchable. Hallelujah. So when we come together, we think about who God is, how he is our shepherd, how he takes care of us, and how he is our sovereign God and our sovereign king, and how he just makes ways out of no way for us. We can, I can't help, I don't know about you, I can't help but to give him praise, honor, and glory. When I think over the courses of my life and all that God has brought me through, all that God has brought me from, and all that he has delivered me from, and all that he is still doing yet today, I am grateful unto the Lord my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International's Sunday, International Ministries Sunday service this morning. We invite you to worship the Lord with us and recognize who it is that we are worshiping. We are worshiping the Lord Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, our soon coming King. Hallelujah. We want to worship him today. We're going to sing songs of praise unto him. We're going to intercede and, and, and uh, Minister Val is going to come in a moment to invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit into this service with a short word of prayer. Minister uh, Kelly is going to live, take us to the throne. Minister Beverly today is going to uh, sing us a song of praise and usher us further into our praise and worship service. And then I'm going to come back for a little short word of exhortation before we hear the word of the Lord this morning, because that is why we come. We come to hear a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister Valerie, would you lead us in a short word of intercession this morning, a, a short prayer of invocation this morning to invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit into this service and ask him to have his way. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah this morning. I'm going to first read Isaiah 50 and 4. And it says, The Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as the learned. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God, we enter to your gates this morning, God, just to give you thanks, Lord God, to give you glory, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, Lord God, for breathing oxygen in our lungs, Lord God, to give you praise one more time, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. You have allowed us to do whatever it is that we wanted to do all week long, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father God. So Lord, we come, hallelujah, just thanking you right now, Lord God, for a new day, Lord God, of grace and mercy, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, because you is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord God, when we think on the goodness of you, Lord God. Hallelujah, how you have kept us, Lord God, how you have kept our families, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. 
we can't help, Lord God, but to lift your name up, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You just keep blessing us over and over and over and over and over again, Lord God. And for that, Lord God, we lift you up, Lord God. We welcome you in on this line, Father God. Lord God, we pray that your spirit, Lord God, will go to each and every last one of our homes, Lord God, in our hearts, Lord God, in our minds, Lord God, and on this technology this morning, Lord God. Father, we we pray, Lord God, that you will bless every instrument on the line this morning, Lord God, to give you the glory, to give you the praise and the honor that is due unto you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God, we pray. Lord God, as you have prepared the table before us this morning, we pray, we pray, Lord God, that the woman of God, Lord God, will speak what thus says the Lord, Lord God. Hallelujah, for your word said, Lord God, it is you who give us word, Lord God. You give a, a word to the um, learned, Lord God, to give to us, Lord God, in time of weary, Lord God, in times of encouragement, Lord God. So, Lord God, we pray that the woman of God will decrease, that your spirit will rise up in her this morning. And, Lord God, as she give out, Lord God, as she feed the flock, Lord God, as she obey your words, Lord God, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will bless her home, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, while she yet speaking, Lord God, that you will bless her family, Lord God, bless her children and grandchildren, Lord God. Hallelujah for the obedience of you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. I pray the hearts will be open, Lord God, to receive what it is that you have for your children on today. And for that, Lord God, we thank you, we bless you, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to hear some words, a song of praise by Minister Beverly. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Minister Val, for that great prayer. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the whole the Lamb of God, oh, wash me in your precious blood till I am just a Lamb of God, oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God. I love the Holy Lamb of God. So wash me in your precious blood till I am just a Lamb of God. Our hearts cry. We magnify in this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's height to praise and glorify. Unified, know how we love you, yes, God. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship, oh, Lord, our hearts cry, we magnify 
In this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's height to praise and glorify. Unified and know oh, how we love you. Uh, oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Yes, God. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Yes, we do, Father God. Oh, how we praise you. Yeah, God. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord, oh, how we love you, yes, Lord, and oh, how we praise you, oh, how we worship, oh, Lord, oh, how we love you. We lift your heart a day and know oh, how we praise you. We magnify, oh, how we worship. Glory to your God, oh, Lord, oh, how we love you, yes, God, and know oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship, glory God. Oh, Lord, oh, how we love you. We cry out to you, God. Oh, how we praise you, hallelujah. Oh, how we worship, hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Hallelujah. Oh, how we praise you. Yes, my God. And oh, how we worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. We give you glory. Oh, how we praise you. And we honor Oh, how we worship, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, oh, how we love you. Yes, we do, Father. And oh, how we praise you, hey, yeah, God. Oh, how we worship, hallelujah, Father. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you with our voices raised. Oh, how we praise you. Ah, yeah. And oh, how we worship. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Yes, my God. Oh, how we praise you. And oh, how we worship, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, and we won't stop worshiping you, Lord. We won't stop praising you, Lord. We'll give you glory, glory, glory. Oh, Lord. We won't stop worshiping you, Lord. We won't stop praising you, Lord. We'll give you glory, glory, glory. 
Oh, Lord. Hallelujah, we praise and bless your name, God. Hallelujah, we won't stop praising you and we won't stop worshiping you, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We love to worship and praise the name of the Lord our God. We love to come before his presence with singing. We love to magnify his name for his name is great in all the earth. His name is above all names. Hallelujah. We love the holy lamb of God. Hallelujah. It is the lamb of God who was slain for us, hallelujah. We love to come and worship and magnify and sing praises unto him, hallelujah. It is the blood of the Lamb of God that was slain for us, oh God, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now, hallelujah, because it is the power that is, comes out of your blood that was shed for our sins, oh God, hallelujah. It is the power in the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, that washes us whiter than snow. Hallelujah. It is the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of the blood of the Lamb of God that was shed for the remission of our sins that can heal our sick bodies. Hallelujah. There is power in the blood of the Lamb of God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. There is power in the blood of the Lamb of God that is able to cleanse us, oh God, hallelujah. There is power, 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 wondrous working power in the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have blood running through our veins that God has placed in us when he created us. Hallelujah, but the blood of his son, Jesus, that was slain for us, his blood is more powerful than any blood that we could ever see. Hallelujah. And it is in when we speak the power of the blood, when we speak the name of Jesus, when we speak and sing about the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Things begin to happen. Hallelujah. There is so much power in the blood of Jesus that even if you just begin to sing songs, the devil has to flee, hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't use the power of the blood of Jesus enough. Hallelujah, it is able to make demons tremble, hallelujah. It is able to, we, we know it is able to save us from sin, is able to, um, to keep us from sin, save us from death, keep us clean, hallelujah. Put us back in right standing with God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, there is power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for choosing to give your life on the cross so that we are able to be resurrected through your power, your blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, there is nothing like nothing like the word of God, because it is the word of God that is going to sustain us. It is the word of God that's going to keep us. It's the word of God that's going to transform our lives. It's the word of God that is going to transform our minds. The word of God tells us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the word of God, which is Jesus, is able to transform and help us to renew our minds. So we're coming to hear a word from the Lord this morning to help us transform our minds. Hallelujah. Who's ready for the word of God? I know I am ready. I have been ready since I got up this morning for the word because I know that when things begin to go crazy in my life, I can think back on the word of God, the word of God that will keep me grounded when all hell is breaking loose in life. Hallelujah. It is the word of God that will help us to be settled. It is the word of God that will give us, that will undergird us in the midst of chaos, hallelujah. It is the word of God. It is the word. We look for all kinds of things to settle us. We look for all kinds of things to keep us grounded. We look for all kinds of things to sustain us and to hold us up and to pick us up, but nothing can sustain us, keep us and pick us up like the word of God. 
the word of the living God because it is true, it is alive, and it is active because the word of God is the person of Jesus himself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we want to hear the word. We're going to hear the word of God this morning from our very own Providence, Kara McCray. I know the word, the Lord has given her a word in her mouth that she's going to deliver us, deliver to us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stretch our hands to our screens. Hallelujah. And say, Prophetess McCray, preach the word of God and preach us till times get better. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophetess Karen McCray, people of God, hear ye the word of the Lord from Prophetess Karen McCray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Evangelist Lisa Johnson, for uh, the introduction, the words of exhortation. Uh, thank you, uh, Ministry Valerie Brooks and Minister Beverly, for uh, leading us this morning in prayer and in a worship song. Uh, there is a word from the Lord today. I'll be coming from Deuteronomy 26, and I'll also be coming out of, of 1 Samuel. But before I uh, begin the word, um, I give thanks to the Lord for the, the psalmist that we have at, at KDMI. Um, I thank you, Minister Beverly, and I thank you, Minister Kelly. Uh, there are many others, but those are the two that we've been using online to usher in and help usher in the presence of the Lord as we go. But I'm going to ask uh, Minister Kelly, I know that you've got a song in you, and I'm going to ask that before I come with the word. Uh, Minister Kelly, would you bring forth that song for us, and then I will come back and uh, give the word of the living God. Minister Kelly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the says the Lord. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus says the lord jesus jesus how i trust him how i prove him all and all jesus jesus hallelujah precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more she's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the says the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I, I trust you, how I prove you are and are, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, hope for grace to trust him more, I'm so glad 
I learned to trust him. Press to Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that he is with me and he will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him all and all. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, 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 precious Jesus, hallelujah, that's the name above every name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you more, hallelujah. He is sweet. Hallelujah. It's sweet to trust in our Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are trusting in Jesus? Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. He's the sweetest. Hallelujah. Uh, he is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I told you she had a song. <laughs> Ah, and she took us down to one of those old hymns, hallelujah, that reminds you, huh, and all of us that we have a savior and that we trust in him and that we are to trust in him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Giving honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is my savior, my king, my God and my Lord, give thanks to him today. We give uh, thanks to our Lord and Savior for our pastors, Apostle Jimmy C. Thompson Jr. and Prophet is Natalie Thompson, who uh, entrusts us to uh, speak the word of the living God, or whether they are present or whether they are absent. We thank uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he has taken them over the highways and the byways for them to be refreshed today. Uh, because how many of you know that pastors need to be fed also? Hallelujah. And we thank God that uh, they have a covering that will feed them. So we bless God that they're away being fed and we're going to continue uh, to do our assignments, are y'all hearing me, as given by the Lord. So in Deuteronomy chapter 26, New King James Version, beginning at 18 and 19. The word of the Lord says, also today, the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people. Just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments. Grab hold of this people. And that he will set you high above all nations which he has made in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. Verse 19 again says, and that he will set you high above all nations, which he has made in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has promised. Now, if you would, turn over to... First Samuel, 
1 Samuel chapter 8. Uh, some years have passed now. When Deuteronomy was given, this was a word that came from the Lord through his servant Moses to the people of God that he had brought out of Egypt. And uh, he was giving them some instructions, giving them some commandments. And now here it is many, many, many years late. Moses is dead. Joshua is dead. The Bible says in Judges, there arose some, a nation of children who did not know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he began to appoint judges over them. And if you have ever read, if you're a student of the word, you'll know in the book of Judges that the children got in and out of trouble with the Lord. And that they would go in and out of bondage because of their rebellion. Then God would send a deliverer, his judges. And uh, now we come to where we've got the prophet now, Samuel. And we're going to skip a few verses. And so now the prophet Samuel, beginning at verse 1. It says, now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. But his sons did not walk in the way, in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted judges. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Skip down to verse 19. And it says, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but we will have a king over us that we may also be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Today I want you to talk to talk to you about the danger of forfeiting your special place in God. There is a danger in forfeiting your special place in God. If you rehearse what was said in the book of Deuteronomy, God told them specifically what he was going to do. He said, if you keep my commandments, if you do all the things that I said, listen what God said. The Lord said, I'm going to make you high above all nations. He didn't say, I'm going to make you like other nations. He said, I'm going to make you high above all nations, which I made. The other nations didn't even make themselves. The Lord says, I made the other nations, but I'm going to make you high above all those nations, not only in praise, but in name and in honor. And that you be a holy people to the Lord your God. I'm going to make you a special people out of all the earth. I'm going to make you a special people people. I'm going to give you a name. I'm going to honor you. Uh-oh. 
and I'm going to make you a people of praise. But something began to happen over time. This is what I'm saying. Over time, some things began to happen. And we have to be careful that we don't let time and circumstance cause us to forget the promises of God. Neither can we allow people who have been placed in position, mm, who are abusing their position to cause us to forget the promises of God. Because in this situation, we see a nation of people who goes to God's chosen vessel, hear me, and they demand a king because his son that he appointed, not God, notice what I see, that God appointed, that, that he appointed were misappropriating. They were abusing their position. Mm. There are people who have been appointed who are in leadership position that are abusing their position. Wow. And the people who appointed them may be godly, but they're not behaving godly. These are the children of the prophet Samuel who was raised in a holy household, a godly household, who have been given some authority, but they're not walking in the ways of their father. And the people recognize it. So rather than going to the leader and saying, listen, we have an issue because your sons are not obeying the, 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 the law, the, the, your children are misappropriating. They're profaning the things of God. We need you to do something. They came to him and made some demands. Be careful how you go to the leadership. Uh oh. Be careful of the demands that you make because the Bible said they demanded. They, they didn't have a conversation with him. They didn't have counsel with him. They, they went as an organized group of people. In other words, they got together, they made some decisions, and they went to him with their minds already made up. Not realizing or completely understanding what they were doing. Mm. Be careful that you do not get caught up. I don't care whether it's in church or out of church with organized people who are making demands, not understanding the ramifications of what they're asking of the people in authority who are living, that's what I'm saying, holy and godly lives. Just because Samuel was old, the anointing had not left him. Just because he was old, he was still holy. Just because he was old, he was still God's servant. Now here you are a special people going, making a demand. Uh-oh. And, and, and listen, and the demand you're making from the outside, it seems, it seems like there's nothing wrong with the demand. But there is something wrong with it. How many of you have been around people, uh, even today, who will say to you, it's not that deep? Come on. They will say, it's not that serious. Okay? That's the subtleness of the enemy because everything about the kingdom of the living God is serious. Everything about God is serious. Everything about your salvation is serious. Everything about your deliverance is serious. Anytime people say it's not that serious, you need to step back because my life and my deliverance, my salvation, hallelujah, and my eternal soul is serious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My special place in God is serious. And I shall not forfeit my place because you're saying, oh, it's not that serious. 
but it is serious. And so as Samuel listened to them, he heard what they said, but he also heard what was in their hearts. Are y'all hearing me? And Samuel, not, it, it displeased him because he realized what they were asking. Because in all actuality, what they were asking was putting them in a position that they were really rejecting God. The Lord told Samuel, don't take it personal, Samuel. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me because you are my beloved servant. You are the one I put in authority. You are the one, okay? You're my leadership. You're my voice in the earth realm. Are y'all hearing? And so you're simply doing what I ask you to do. And even if your sons are abusing their position, they still don't have a right to come and demand of all things a king when I'm your king. Uh-oh. Think about this. Who delivered you? Huh? Who brought you out? You see, this is what they're forgetting. They're forgetting actually the covenant they made with God because in the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 12, read it when you have time, they made a covenant with God that he would be their God and they would be his people. So they entered into a covenant agreement. When you became saved, when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, can I tell you, you made a covenant agreement with him. And when you make that covenant agreement with him, what you're saying is, I will abide by whatever you say, the Lord. <laughs> I, I will do what you say. And even if there's some people who come in and abuse their position, I know, Lord, that you have given me another way of handling the situation. Come on here. I, I, there's another way for me to sit down and have a discussion with the person in charge. And, and that way is not one of bullying, it's what, one of demanding. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Mm. God has patterns that we are to follow. And when we don't follow those patterns, just because God gives you what you want, <laughs> Don't think it's right because you're going to suffer the consequences as you will see. And so uh, uh, they had made a covenant with the Lord and now they're, they're forgetting that they were a nation of people who was in bondage under a king. Mm. Yet you want to be like the other nations who got a king and God had to deliver you from a nation who had a king, who had you in bondage, wow, who had his foot on your neck, wow. And God, you know, you, you got to rehearse some things here. Wait a minute. We were under a king who had us in bondage for, for hundreds of years, and God had to bring us out from under this yoke in Egypt. Not only that, when he brought us out, and delivered us, we got to the Red Sea, the king changed his mind about our deliverance and tried to come and get us and take us back, uh-oh, into bondage. And it was God, again, who delivered us by opening up the Red Sea and taking us through it. And that king saw the power of our God and not only did he see it, but we saw it. Or our forefathers saw it. Are y'all hearing me? He said, then, then you got to think about, wait a minute. The God that we serve told us we would have the promised land. He kept us his promise. He helped us to what? To conquer Canaan. Come on here. He, so now we got the promise. I'm, I'm giving you old tips because you better listen good because guess what? This applies to us today. God has delivered us from King's sin. Uh-oh. 
He has delivered us from king addiction. He has delivered us from king alcoholism. He has, he has delivered us from king whoredom. Are y'all hearing me? He has delivered us from king darkness and translated us into the promise of light of his dear son. Mm -hmm. So now that a challenge has come back into our lives, God is saying to you, my special people, my royal priesthood, who I made peculiar, why do you want to go back to being what you used to be? Because a challenge has come your way or because somebody is an authority is not acting like they should. Uh-oh. Why are you going back? Wow. Why are you going back to substance abuse when I delivered you from it? Why? Because a challenge came in your life. Oh, that, that's what he's saying. Why are you going back when I delivered you? But you want to be like everybody else. Okay. You want to be like all of the other nations. Hmm. I have preserved you, said the Lord. I, I preserved you all of this time. But now you're demanding a king. Because you want to be like everybody else. You want to blend in. Uh-oh. Wow. Why do you want to blend when I made you unique? Uh-oh. <laughs> Come on, ask yourself that. Uh, why do you want to blend when I made you a special people, a holy people. Why, why do you want to settle? That's what God is asking us today. Why do you want to settle for something less than when I made you greater than? Uh -oh. Why do you want to go back to being like everybody else? <laughs> and, and you're letting them say it's not that serious. But the Lord is saying, I made you holy. So why would you go back and yoke up with unholiness? Mm -hmm. But here's the reason. Here, here's the reason. Listening to the reason why they wanted a king. Hear what they say. We said, we, we want a king to rule over us. But you already got a king ruling over you. King Jesus. We want to be like all the other nations. But God said, I'm going to make you above all those nations. So why would you give up being above them to become equal with them? Why would you give up the kingdom of the living God to be like a kingdom in the earth? Are y'all hearing me here? Uh, you better catch this. I'm part of the kingdom of the living God. Why would I want to be like the kingdoms of the world? Are, are y'all getting this? Hear me what I'm saying. So, so they say, well, we want a king to judge us. Well, why would I want the world to judge me when I've got the king of kings to be my judge? He is the righteous judge. He's not fickle. You know how man is. One day they're up, the next day they're down. One day they like you, one day they don't. Uh-oh. One one day they're they're crying Hosanna Hosanna, the next day they're saying crucify him. Why why why? These are things, but this is what they were asking when they already had a better way. <clears throat> and so he says. We, we want a king who will go out before us. In other words, we want a celebrity. We want, we want a king who, who, who's clothed in majesty. We want, a, we want our king to go out with pomp and circumstance. We want him to be dressed royally. And we want everybody to see our king. Are y'all hearing me? We want to we wanna show off. You know how Hollywood is. You, you, know, how, you know how that platform is. We, we want everybody to see our king. We want, we want people to see how powerful our king is. We, wanna, we want you to see how grandiose our king is. That's what they meant when they said, we, we want him to go out before us. 
so that when we go out in battle, we need you to see not only how powerful, how grandiose, how majestic he is, but how powerful he is. And God is saying, but I've already done that. Hmm. I've defeated all the kings. <laughs> I, I've already done that. Uh, they've already seen my might. They've already seen my power. Uh, 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 uh. Not only did they see it when I delivered your forefathers out of Egypt, but uh, if you read the book of Judges, how many times have the nations all around you that are allowed to capture you when you were in bondage, when I appointed a judge and delivered you through the judge, how did all the nations not see my majesty? All of them saw the God that you serve. All of them saw me. All of them got to know that you serve the mighty, powerful God. All of them saw the, the uniqueness of my ways. All of the nations round about are talking about the God that you serve. Why would you want a human to represent you when the God who created everything, even all the nations, is your God and your king. But you want this? Wow. You want this when the God who made those nations is your king, but, but this is what you want. You want to give up all of the privileges, all of my kingship for something in the world. That's what he, they're saying. So you can parade it around. So you can brag, look at my king. <laughs> look at who served me. But, but you don't have to do that because I already show myself mine. Matter of fact, your life is a testimony of my power and my might. When you rehearse your life and you look back and you tell people what I've done, was I not, again, was I not the one that delivered you? Did I not take the drugs? taste the drugs out of your mouth? Did I not take the taste of cigarettes out of your mouth? Did I not remove the migraines out of you? When you were barren, did I not make you fruitful? Come on here. When you didn't have any food to eat, did I not make a way for food to come on your table? Uh, 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 did, did I not tell you that I caused men to give out of their bosom to you? An earthly person can't make nobody do nothing. I'm your king and I cause people to move on your behalf, but you want to give me up? Uh-oh. So you can be like everybody else. That, that's what the Lord is saying to us today. Oh my. And then he said, we want a king who will go before us and fight our battles. Well, what you think I've been doing all this time? <laughs> that, that's what the Lord is saying. What do you think I've been doing all this time? Who do you think was fighting your battles? Do you really think it was the U.S. Army? Do you really think it was the Marines? Uh, uh, do you really think it, huh? Mm. Or who do you think was fighting your battles all of these years? As a matter of fact, have you not begun to realize as a child of the living God that your battles are not physical, they're not carnal, but they're spiritual? Mm -hmm. That mental torment that you were having in the mind, that was spiritual. So did not remove the torment from your mind so that you can sleep at night? My God, did, did I not remove the spirit of envy and jealousy? Did I not remove all of those spirits from your life? I fought those battles. Matter of fact, I fought the battle that, that, that you were supposed to be getting a promotion and then they wouldn't promote you. But I moved in and I overturned some things and you got elevated and you didn't even have the degrees to get it. Who you think? was fighting your battle. I gave you the promotion. Mm -hmm. 
because promotions doesn't come from man. They don't come from the east or the west. They come from me. I'm the one. It gave you the increase when you shouldn't have even had it. Are y'all hearing me? I'm the one that fight, fights your back. But you want to be like everybody else. You want a king so you can look like and be like everybody else. Do you realize how often today we are subtly being led astray to accept the things in the world and give up what God has already given us? The Bible says everything that pertains to life and godliness, God has already given us. Uh, God has even given us the power to get wealth. But we want to be like everybody else. The Lord says you are unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. So why would you want to look like somebody else? Mm. Why is it that uh, ladies, you're spending all this money having your uh, body altered? Hmm? Because you want to look like somebody in the magazine. Come on here. When I said that I made you fearfully and wonderfully, but because your outside doesn't look like the world says your outside is supposed to look. Come on here. You change it. Me and you doing the same thing. Why are you changing your physique, your physical physique, so that you look like, come on here, what the world says you're supposed to look like, not realizing that when you do that, you're doing two things. You're saying, God, I don't like who you made. Uh-oh. My God. <laughs> That's what you say. God, I don't like who you, uh, 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 how you made me, so I'm going to remake myself. Uh-oh. And then you get remade, all right? And then a couple of years later, and sometimes not years, it's even months, all of a sudden, the body that you remade begins to reject what you did. Okay, you begin to have some issues with what you demanded and what you asked for. And then you want to blame the devil, but no, that was your decision. And because you got to understand, they demanded this. The Bible says he will give you the desires of your heart. If you mess with God long enough, he will give you the desires of your heart. But before he gave them the desires, in the book of Samuel, those verses that I skipped, God says, I'll, if you want a king, here's what's going to happen. Can I tell you something? When you ask God for a desire, that's going to cause you problems in the future. The Lord will tell you, look, are you sure this is what you want? Because what you're asking, here are the things that's going to happen if I give you these things. He said, listen, if you demand a king, I'll give you a king. But because of what you're asking me, the way you're demanding it, here are the qualifications of the king that I'm going to give you. Because the qualifications of the king that you're asking, you want kings like the nations of this world. Here are what the nations of the world kings do. Here's the authority of the nations of the kings of the world. They can do whatever they want to your children. They can take your money. They can take your cattle. They can take your land. They can do anything they want to do to you. But my king, not like that. My king is not a bully, okay? My, my king is not a thief. My king won't just walk all over you. My, my king respects who I have chosen. Are y'all hearing me? I love you enough, okay? That as your king and whoever I appoint as your king, not who you demanded, will be holy and will be righteous and they're going to have a standard. But you want a king like the other nations. So let me tell you how the kings of the other nations will be. And after he told them that, 
they said, we don't care. You see, you can want what you want so bad. You say, I don't care, just give it to me. You know, when you went and uh, you decided that you wanted a Mercedes Benz on a Volkswagen income. Come on, I'm gonna make it, let's make it simple. You decided you wanted a Mercedes Benz and you knew you had a Volkswagen income, but you wanted the Mercedes Benz, okay? And God said to you, listen, if you buy this Mercedes Benz, okay? Even if they lower the payments enough for you to afford it, here's how long you're gonna be in it. Here's the cost to maintain it. Are y'all hearing me? But but you don't have what it takes to maintain this Mercedes Benz. Are y'all hearing me? But you want it anyway. So the Lord says, okay. You say, I don't care. I don't care. I want a Mercedes Benz. Because guess what? Everybody in my neighborhood got it. Everybody getting it. I want one. I want to look like everybody else. So the Lord says, go ahead on and get it. And you had it. Then all of the things that the Lord said was going to happen begins to happen. And now you weeping and you crying. And you saying, but I thought the blessings of the Lord adds no sorrow. That wasn't the blessing. That was your demand and your desire. Uh-oh. Come on here now. That, that you the one wanted to go back into bondage. And I tried to keep you out of it. But you wanted to be like everybody else. And now, this what you say? And then to cover yourself, you tell all your friends, you mask it because you don't want to admit your mistake. You don't want to admit you messed up. So you tell everybody, child, the devil. Come on here. And the devil looking like what I had to do with it. <laughs> God warned you and you decided you told your God, your king, this is what you wanted anyway. You told him you wanted to go back into this and perhaps get some. Come on here. Come on. I, I know I'm talking to somebody here today. Because what you're saying is I'm rejecting my special place because I want to blend in. And I don't care what it causes me to blend in. I don't care what I'm giving up. And I'm telling you today, God is saying, do not give up your special place, your uniqueness to go back into bondage because it doesn't look like bondage. You need to understand. It didn't look like bondage, but it was. Because then when you look at, come on, when you look at what happened from then on, all the kings of Israel, I'm, I'm not through here, all the kings of Israel, they had about 40 some kings and all of them weren't good. Mm. The Bible says when you read Kings and Chronicles, you begin to see that there was what they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm. They did which was right in the sight of the Lord. They did which is evil. They did which was right. So they got kings and some of the kings were good and some of the kings were not in the sight of God. Are you hearing me? Because for the people who followed the wicked kings, huh, they were not wicked. But to God, they were wicked. Are y'all hearing me? Because their wickedness caused them to sin against God. But that was their king. That's what they asked for. And so they had to deal with that all of those years. And then all of the blessings that they had, come on, following those kings, God in the midst of that sent prophets. And the kings who didn't want to hear the prophets from God, 
ignored the prophets from God to hear the prophets that they made. Oh, y'all talking about Samuel made his sons and let his sons do whatever. But what about all the kings who assigned their prophets and priests to do whatever they wanted? Are y'all hearing me? And they followed them. And this was, wait a minute, this was not outside the kingdom. These were people in the kingdom who disobeyed the voice of God. Can I tell you something? We have been warned that there's going to come a time within the kingdom of the living God that false prophets, false teachers are going to arrive. You've got to be able to discern through the word of God and the spirit of the living God, those who are false, those are false apostles, false teachers, false prophets. You've got to be able to discern the heresies and the false doctrines that's coming in that will cause you. Mm -mm, to go astray. Are y'all hearing me? And they're causing you to go astray. And the reason you are able to go astray is because you want to be like everybody else. And they're playing on your emotion so that you can be like what? Everybody else because everybody wants to blend. And the society we're in today, if you don't act like everybody, if you don't agree with everybody, what they'll say, I'll cancel you. Well, cancel me because I shall live holy. I shall live righteous. I shall do what the word of the living God said. I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to eschew evil. I'm not going, I'm, I'm not doing it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm not going along with the program. I'm sorry. So cancel me. It's all right to cancel me. Because I don't agree with your lifestyles. Your lifestyles are unholy. Guess what? I'm not promoting it, so cancel me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because I'm not giving up my, I, I don't mind being peculiar. I don't mind being unique because God has made me this. Because he's now saying you are part of a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And there's an expectation from the God that we serve, the king that we serve. My God. And I will not lower my standard. Uh -huh. Neither will I give up my blessings so I can blend in. Come on now. We have what they call social media influencers. Be careful those social media influences don't influence you away from the living word. Be careful that marketing doesn't influence you away from the living word. Be careful politics doesn't influence you away from the word. There are things, be careful that people on your job don't influence you away from the word. Be careful that your supervisor or even your boss does not cause you, come on, and influence you from the word by compromising your job. We are supposed to live honestly. We are supposed to be integral. Come on here. But if they're asking you to do something, wow, that does not align with the word of God and you give it up and do it and you begin to say, oh, that's not bad. That's just a little thing. That's the little foxes easing your way and you're giving up, come on, your special place so that you can blend in. Mm -hmm. And then later on down the road, it's going to bite you. Come on here. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? All of us have made a covenant with the Lord when we gave our lives to Jesus the Christ. And we said we would walk in his way no matter the cost. There are always going to come challenges. There's always going to be some sons of people in authority who may be godly, but maybe their sons and daughters are not. But you cannot allow the sons and the daughters unrighteousness to cause you to make a demand on the one who's righteous. 
to cause you to give up. Come on. The holy, righteous, living king. The last time that happened, the last time that happened, we see it in the New Testament, in the Gospels. The last time we saw the manipulation of those in leadership who say, why should all that let us send this one man to the cross so that the Romans won't kill us all? So they set it up, not even realizing that this was still within the will of God, but the king came, but he didn't come the way you thought he should. And what did I say? So one day you recognize that Jesus is the Messiah. You recognize him as king and you begin to shout, hallelujah, hosanna, glory to God in the highest. You begin to exhort and extol him as king and as Lord and as Messiah. But then for a few coins, huh? are y'all hearing me? for some manipulation, are y'all hearing me? You allow some people in authority to get you to not only lie on him, but there were a group who now said, condemn him, give us Barabbas, give us a thief and kill the king. Okay? Give us sin and kill goodness, uh-oh. Give us unrighteousness and kill righteousness. Are y'all hearing me? Give us unholiness and kill holy. The Bible says there was going to come a day when we were called that which was holy, what? Unholy and that which was unholy, holy. That you was going to be reversed. But guess what? It already happened. And it sent the righteous one, the Messiah, it sent him to the cross. And because of that, guess what? We who were afar saw the light. Huh? And now we who were outside, when we received Jesus, now we're inside. And God is saying, don't make the same mistake as those of old. Huh? Don't make the same mistake as those who sent Jesus to the cross. Don't make the same mistake as those who demanded a king when you already have a king. Don't make the same mistake and forfeit your special place by wanting to blend in and look like everybody else. Today, I urge you, if you have given up and forfeited and decided and have started trying to blend in and you hear this message today and you realize the error of your way, there is a way out and it's called repent. The Lord is calling you to repentance. And when you repent, it's not saying forgive me. It says repent means to turn from what you're doing and turn to what you're supposed to do and to continue in it. And God is calling you to repent today. Okay. And once you repent, guess what? God will give you a clean slate. If you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're listening to this today, and you realize that you are caught up with king sin, king addiction, king darkness, come on here, king control, king out of control, king chaos, king darkness, we invite you today to forfeit, give up the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of God's dear son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Will it be easy? No, but you will have a helper called the Holy Spirit to help you. And God has put people in the kingdom, pastors and teachers after his own heart to help and guide you along the way. So we offer you the Lord Jesus Christ today 
if you've never received him. And we also offer you a place to come and work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. We offer you Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International, where our shepherds are Apostle Jimmy C. Thompson Jr. and Prophetess Natalie Thompson. We offer all of that to you this day. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. And we offer you a place to come and work it out. We thank you for listening. Father God, we thank you that you have made us your own special people. We thank you that according to 1 Peter 2 and 9, that we are a chosen generation, that we are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people who are to show forth praise unto you who have called us out of darkness into the marvelous light of your kingdom. Just as in Deuteronomy 7, 6, you told Israel they were a holy people, that they were chosen to be a special people above all people because of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. We are now able to be that chosen generation. God, we thank you for making a way for us. And we thank you, Lord, for enlightening us on this day. We are satisfied with you, God more than satisfied with you as our God and as our King. And we, Lord, today are determined to remain your special people, your chosen generation. And we purpose not to blend in and give up our special place, our uniqueness, just because we want to look like other nations and cause you to be displeased with us in any way. Father, we thank you for enlightening us. We thank you for showing us, hallelujah, the way. We thank you for showing us the truth and the life. We thank you for establishing us in the kingdom. We thank you for your generosity and your love. And it is in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, we pray. And the people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I turn it back over to our facilitator for the day, Evangelist Lisa Johnson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give God a hand clap of praise for that word this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we are God's special people. Hallelujah. I was taking notes and and, and, and trying to keep up and take notes at the same time. So there were so many nuggets in there. A few things I wrote down was be careful not to allow situations and circumstances to forget our position in God. Hallelujah. And to be careful. There were several be carefuls. Now we've gotten some warnings this morning. Hallelujah. Be careful not to let what we desire to take us that desire to take us back into bondage when God has already delivered us out of something. Right. Now that's a big one because we always want to try to do something again if it didn't work out the first time. Hallelujah. But we will not go back. Remember who our King Jesus is. Hallelujah. We know it's election time all over the place. And, you know, we're electing government officials, state, local, and, and the presidential election is coming up soon. Allow King Jesus to guide us. Amen. No matter who is in position in the world, we still have the king above all kings, King Jesus, as our governor, amen, as our uh, head, amen. And we were not made to fit in. We are God's special people. So we cannot try to be influenced by the world to look like them, amen, 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 hallelujah. I tell you, I got so many notes over here. So many, but it's such a great and rich word, a word of encouragement, a word of re a reminder, a reminder, especially in this time that we are in right now when influencers is, that's the new buzzword out here nowadays. And so many things are vying 
for our attention. So many things are vying for our desire. We have to make sure that we stay in the word of God and be influenced and transformed by the word of God. Amen. And what God has said about us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Prophetess McCray, for that mighty, powerful word. I thank the Lord for what he has given you to help us, his children. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited about taking this word and holding on to it? So that when things come up and the challenges come up and our desires start to get out of whack, we have something we can pull from. Amen. Deuteronomy 26. Amen. Hallelujah. First Samuel 8. Come on here. And we can be reminded. We can be reminded. Amen. It is giving time in the household of the Lord. Amen. We, there are several ways that we have to give because we definitely want to sow into the household of faith this morning. We know that we are able to sow by several means, cash app at KDMI The City. We are able to sow by Givelify Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International. We are able to sow by check. We are able to sow. You can go on our website and find the ways that you can connect and the ways that you can give. Hallelujah. It is a privilege to give in the household of faith. It, when God has given us something, it is always a privilege to be able to give back unto him that which he, a portion of what he has given us. Amen. Hallelujah. It has been a great day in the Lord today. We have come, we have worshiped him. We have praised his name. We have sung songs unto him that, that wrecked me this morning. Let me tell you, Minister Kelly, you wrecked me with that song this morning because that's one of my favorites. <laughs> but I thank God for the gifts that he has placed in our ministry and in this house. And I thank God for our leaders, Apostle Jimmy C. Thompson and Prophet Natalie Thompson, who trust us to carry on as the service as though when they are here, as well as when they are not here. Amen. I'm grateful to the Lord for the shepherds that he has placed all of us under, because it is God who has added to this body as he saw fit. Amen. We want to pray that they continue to rest and get refreshed where they are. Hallelujah. We going to wrap up this service today. Hallelujah. I pray that the blessings of the Lord be upon you. I pray in the name of Jesus that God in his infinite wisdom, that as he, we continue to go, that he will give us his wisdom, that we will, he will give us his supernatural wisdom to operate in the world that we are in, but not of. I decree and declare that I say that we are God's chosen people and we operate as God's chosen people. I say that we remember we are his special people and we will not desire the things of the world, but we will desire the things of the kingdom of God so that we can operate effectively in the kingdom of God. I say that we are covered under the blood of Jesus, us, our households, our family members, and in everything we do, it shall prosper and that we shall be in good health, even as our soul prospers. May the Lord bless you richly. May he bless you mightily. May he give you everything that you need, continue to give you everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. May he bless your going out and your coming in. May your households be at peace and that your feet will be walking in the shalom of God, not just with the shoes of peace, but that we live in the shalom of God. May you be blessed. May your homes be blessed. May your lives be blessed. In precious name of Jesus, we pray amen and amen. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. And remember, you are God's special people. Amen. Expecting the great things. I'm expecting the great things. I'm expecting the great